Hmm. Over to you, Mr. Jem. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. About 400 million years ago, primitive life made the ultimate journey. It crawled out of the sea to begin a whole new chapter of existence on dry land, which is why it sometimes seems a bit odd that human beings now take every opportunity to get back in. But our dreams of deep sea adventures are always suffocated by one big problem. Our lungs are great at absorbing oxygen from the air, but we're just not designed to take it straight from water. Of course, being a pretty good inventor, nature solved all these problems eons ago by giving fish gills. Fish make it look so easy. Their gills filter oxygen that's dissolved in the water. Compared to fish, we're a bit of a damp squid. But, like so many things in nature, building an artificial version is something that's had inventors stumped for generations. Early divers used long tubes from the surface to pump air down to the sea floor. God knows how that felt. Then, in 1943, legendary marine explorer Jacques Cousteau perfected his aqualung. Divers could now take the air down with them and swim around freely. Of course, when the tank runs empty, we've got to come up to the surface. To stay down forever, we need a way to mimic the fish and use the air that's dissolved in the water to breathe. And believe it or not, this might not be as far off as you might think. Alan Bodner from Haifa, northern Israel, has spent the last nine years trying to get his underwater breathing invention off the drawing board. He's trying to extract breathable air straight from the water, so one day, divers could stay underwater for as long as they want. I knew that there was oxygen in the water, and the fish used this for breathing. So the only thing was how we can take this oxygen out and breathe it. I mean, fish are smarter than we are in this sense. They can leave the oxygen in liquid form and just breathe it like that. We have to first convert the liquid oxygen into gas because our lungs need gas oxygen. And what's the ultimate aim for the system? The aim right now is for submarines and underwater habitats. Maybe in the future we'll be able to make it small enough also for individual divers. Maybe in the future we'll all live underwater. So, for any of you who fancy living underwater, here's how Alan's invention works. If you've ever opened a bottle of pop, you've probably seen the system work already. You see, fizzy drinks are made by dissolving gas into water, but the amount of gas water can hold depends on the pressure it's under. These are under a fair bit of pressure. If I release the pressure, the water won't be able to hold as much gas and it'll come out as bubbles like this. And that's exactly what Alan's doing. He's reducing the pressure of the water, and so the dissolved gas is able to bubble out. Then he needs to collect the bubbles, and he needs to collect them quickly, because we need a lot of air. So, he makes a whirlpool. You see there? All the bubbles migrate to the centre of the whirlpool. The relatively dense water is flung to the outside. The relatively light bubbles migrate to the centre. Alan then puts a pipe into that column of gas in the centre, sucks it out for a fella to breathe. In Alan's prototype machine, water is pumped through this pipe into this plastic drum, where it gets put into a spin which creates the whirlpool I was talking about. This is attached to a vacuum pump that sucks out that oxygen-rich gas and delivers it as a nice, breathable mixture out of this pipe here. This lean, mean, marine machine collects enough air from this swimming pool to keep someone breathing for 20 minutes. To prove this is more than just fishful thinking, he's putting his own lungs on the line and becoming a human guinea pig. Soon, Alon's amazing machine has sucked a tank full of air straight from the water. I guess this is the moment of truth. I think that more people have walked on the moon than breathed air that we extracted from the water. Let's see it. I'm so intrigued now.
F first up. Yes. Yeah, okay. That's fine. This is important. I do? Yeah, yes. you're good with that? Yes. Right. Okay, next big question. Yes, I do feel like a fish. Feel like a fish in a fish tank, maybe. Okay, and finally. Sure, come on. Really? Alon's invention works, but clearly there's no way a diver can carry one of these on their back just yet. Our dreams of being able to swim around like a fish are still on the drawing board, but maybe one day we'll never need to come up for air. Alan? Alan? Oh, Mr. Jem, all that floundering around, still I want carp on. Ooh, hold him, steady, that. Uh, Finally, oh no, he's after me buns. Kevin, my oh, boy, sit, stay. Oh, Kevin, that's blown it. Yes, well, um, that's it for this time. Next week we'll be. Oh, Gromit. Right. Have you got 50p for the meter? <laughs> if you've enjoyed our show, grab your mouse and log on to our World of Invention website, bbc.co.uk slash Wallace and Gromit. You'll find a fantastic competition, details of our roadshow, as well as lots